Hi, this is Roger from Kankerlips with another eBay find of the in Germany famous ELV 7000 series from the 1980s. Uh, this is a special diode and transistor tester. And what can you do with it? Well, basically you can measure three things. First is the current gain B or HFE as it is sometimes called at five different base currents. Or for diodes, uh, these are the forward currents and you can measure then um, the voltage if it would be a diode at five different forward currents starting from 10 microamps in steps of 10 up to 100 milliamps. And here with the second rotary switch you set uh, for as a safety measure the maximum collector current so for not to damage your transistor. This also serves as a range switch for the display. And the next thing, and that is quite an interesting, you can measure the breakdown voltage of the collector emitter diode and also the leakage uh, current. So you can turn up this up to 200 volts and the collector current goes up to 2 amps. Of course it is limited here for the breakdown measurement to a few milliamps. So quite an interesting thing. And what is this good for? Well, if you want to match, especially power transistors, then you are usually matching them for equal current gains. And why is it so important to have uh, quite a large range of five decades to set the base current? Well, what some of you don't know, the current gain of a transistor is not a constant, but as you can see, from the picture in the background, it is dependent on the base current or in other words, it's dependent on the collector current. And we, we can see this here. If we, we, we now have a small signal transistor, a BC337, uh, with only 100 microamps base current and we get a current gain of around 55. If we turn this up for one more decade, we get something around 360. It is changing now because the transistor is warming up now uh, with uh, already a substantial collector current. And as all parameters of transistors, they are all temperature dependent. So let's turn this back. And if we go back to a very low base current of 10 microamps, we only have a current gain of around six. So there's a great variation in the current gain of a bipolar transistor. Testable with this thing, thing is are only uh, bipolar junction transistors. In theory, it could be modified also to measure MOSFETs. So there it's not the current gain that you would measure. You would, instead of uh, setting different base currents, you would set different gate voltages and what you then get is the so-called transconductance but you would you cannot modify this thing here internally uh, to give you also measurements for MOSFETs you would have to build it up a second time to have a MOSFET transconductance measurement instrument so and uh, this thing is completely built up with discrete well, not only with discrete components, but as you can see, uh, there are no custom-made components, all standard, standard components. It's built up completely analog, except of course for the ICL7107 multimeter IC here on the secondary PCB. Uh, the only custom thing is the transformer with four different windings, but you can uh, replace this or use two or three different transformers uh, just to build this. And um, you can download uh, the whole manual, sorry, only in German, still from ELV magazine. Um, I will give you the link for that. It costs around 50 euro cents or something like that. And if you're from outside of Europe, just input a phantom address in Europe uh, because the address is not verified or uh, checked and you get the uh, download as a PDF via email or via a download link. So what, what's the difference between a curve tracer 
Well, with a curve tracer, as you can see some pictures in the background, you get the general characteristics of a transistor over a whole range of collector emitter voltages and what is stepped there is the uh, base current. So the different curves are with different base currents usually stepped in in a linear way and not in a logarithmic way. Here we have steps of uh, a factor of 10 while with a curve tracer you get for example 10 microamps, 20 microamps, 30 microamps and so on. And if you want to get the current gain out of the traces of a curve tracer, well you have to measure on the oscilloscope screen the amplitude and what you can see from the pictures in the background. The current gain of a transistor is not only dependent on the base current and of course on the temperature, but it's also out of the linear region at, at higher base currents. The current gain is also dependent on the collector emitter voltage. Uh, so this is, this is something you can not vary here. The uh, collector emitter voltage is something around 5 volts. So th this is fixed. But anyway, for matching uh, transistors, especially power transistors, this thing is quite handy, especially because it displays the current gain directly. And here this range switch is, is coupled also with the decimal point, so that you always uh, get a direct display of the current gain. So, uh, quite nice. Of course, this is a specialized test instrument. And what did you have in the past? Well, what was popular in multimeters of the 1980s and 1990s, as you can see here, most of them had as a special feature also a, and here it's called HFE, which is the same as the B, uh, as the DC current gain of a transistor. And I've put in a little, the same transistor that we are testing here. And you can see uh, we get a completely different value because here you measure only a fixed value of base current. So you measure the current gain only at one single point. And this is more not so much for matching transistors, but for checking them if they are still okay. And uh, what's quite annoying is this little transistor socket here. Um, you only can measure small signal or small power transistors. Um, and you're never absolutely sure if the contacts are really intact. Um, so better than nothing. But what is much better um, for Testing if a transistor is okay is this little component testers, which I also introduced in a whole set of videos. So here you can see, I hope you can see it on the screen. I will, you can see that there not only the current gain, but also the pinout of the transistor is displayed at which um, collector current the current gain is measured and a little diagram and it identifies automatically each kind of transistor. So this is the right thing for identifying transistors and checking if they are okay. But also here you only have one or two different base currents depending on the transistor that you can measure. And uh, so this thing is not suitable neither to replace a curve tracer nor to respond to replace um, this thing here where you can set defined base currents. Okay, this should be it for a first look and now we take a look at the circuit diagram and uh, see how this thing works. Alright, here we see the principle of operation. You can see here the switched constant current sources separate for positive base currents for NPNs and negative base currents for PNPs. And this is all switched with relays to the transistor just as well. Collector emitter are relay switched to positive and negative depending on 
if you have an NPN or PNP. And here we have the collector current limitation for not to destruct your transistor and the collector or emitter current is just simply measured with a shunt resistor. And there is two little downsides here. First of all, with NPN, in fact, it's not the collector current that is measured which would be the right value to give you the exact value of the DC current gain, but they're measuring the emitter current. And the emitter current, as you will know, is the sum of the base current and the collector current. But if you have current gains, let's say above 50, then the error due to the additional base current will be less than 2%. And 2% is anyway the accuracy given for this device. Well, for PNPs, they are doing it the right way. They are measuring, in fact, the collector current. And this is to keep the circuit just as simple as possible. Just as well, the constant current sources for the base current are not true constant current sources. As we see, if we take a look at the whole circuit diagram, uh, we'll find what we just saw as a block diagram, that's exactly here. And you can see the base current is just generated here, the positive base currents with a 15.7 volt voltage source and then simple resistors. Well, why 15.7? Because you have 0.6 or 0.7 volts, you get subtracted simply by the base emitter diode here. And then with resistors in steps of 10 starting from 150 ohms up to 1.5 mega ohms you get the relatively exact base current starting from uh, 10 microamps with a 1.5 mega ohm resistor going up to 100 milliamps and so this is from the accuracy sufficient because the base emitter voltage of course, it varies a little bit with the base current, but you can basically neglect this because the variation is, well, let's say 0.1 volts and the error introduced by that is really negligible. And here you see the shunt resistors for measuring the collector current or emitter current if it comes to NPN transistors. And the rest of the measurement circuit is simply the ICL7107 in standard configuration here. It's, it, there's still a little uh, switch when you switch from current measurement where the input of, of the multimeter IC is just con directly connected to the shunt resistors. And if this switch is in the upper position, then it measures the collector voltage with a divider of 1000 to 1. And you can see there is this only a single trim pot here for adjusting uh, the whole circuit. And this uh, simply sets your reference voltage and that is all. And what else do we have? Here we have the power supply. You can see the four different secondary windings of the transformer. We have plus minus 5 volts. We need this for the ICL7107. We need bipolar power supplies so that the input voltage can be referenced to ground. And we have here the generation of the voltages for the base current current sources. Here we have the 15.7 volts they make this by a standard 7812 linear regulator, but at the ground connection, they insert two yellow LEDs, which are just lifting the reference uh, for the 7812 by two forward voltages of the LEDs. And this gives in the end 15.7 volts. So this is a standard technique uh, using the, the standard linear 78 series regulators for giving you voltages just outside uh, the, the voltage that they were originally designed for. Uh, you might wonder why for the negative base currents we have only minus 10 volt. Well, that is because for PNP transistors, this is measured relative to the plus 5.7 
volts which becomes the emitter voltage so in fact this is that used as minus 5.6 volt and if you add this up minus 10 and minus 5.6 gives again minus 15.6 volts so next is the collector current generation as you can see and as I've already uh, told you um, the collector voltage or the collector emitter voltage is constant plus 5.6 volts for NPNs and minus 5.6 volts for PNPs but here with a single pass transistor and two op -arm amps one for regulation the other is for the limitation of the collector current with here with these rotary switch again to protect your transistor with a single pass transistor what is it a tip 140 and well this output gives you up to 2 amps that's the maximum collector current we can measure here and the last thing is here the high voltage generation for the breakdown testing uh, this is this part here with a 90 volt 20 milliamps secondary winding a simple two diode rectifier and again a pass transistor this time in the ground connection uh, simply because there they're using a PNP a BF472 high voltage transistor and a single op amp as a regulator and that's all here's the potentiometer for setting the collector voltage and you can see this goes up to 200 volts but it can only deliver a few milliamps so that is all and you can see all in all the circuit is relatively simply so it is suitable if you want to build one of your own just make either a screenshot here of this diagram or you download the whole manual in German uh, from the ELV website. So let's finally uh, make a measurement of the breakdown voltage and the leakage current. For that purpose uh, we set the base current to zero and then we turn up this potentiometer. First of all the display now is in milliamps collector current and we turn it up until we see an, a substantial substantial increase in collector current and you should be quite carefully for not to destroy the transistor although the collector current is limited so and here you see here is the breakdown point and we are now having 50 or 60 micro amps leakage current and then, then we switch to the voltage uh, mode and we see at 135 volt this transistor breaks down and the transistor is specified only for 45 volts so this is a typical example that the absolute maximum ratings are very conservative and that usually usually transistors can withstand substantially larger collector voltages but this is of course not guaranteed and th this is basically a non-destructive test as long as the maximum power that the transistor can withstand uh, is not exceeded then uh, it's no problem for the transistor it does not become destroyed nor does it become damaged because the transistor is not destroyed by by over voltage or over current it's only destroyed if the temperature on the die becomes so hot that in the end the doping atoms are beginning to migrate and diffuse from p into the n junction and in reverse so that would destroy a transistor but uh, it's still cold so I cannot feel any heat here and so uh, this is a non-destructive test of the maximum collector emitter voltage where the transistor starts to break down so this is quite a nice feature you don't find much often in other test and measurement uh, equipment for transistors so that was it for today thanks for watching you can support me on patreon if you like this video and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.